Let's talk about violence. Yeah. Because, you know, we talk about uh, Walking Dead and we talk yeah. about violence on CSI. Yeah. And you write about violence a lot. I do. What is the difference between the way you approach violence and the way Walking Dead so CSI violence? So interesting a question. And it's the same with any scene of rape or abuse or racism. Are you endorsing it or are you exposing it? And that's a big question. For instance, there's a play called Effing and Shopping. Yeah. I left. I almost never leave a play in this community because there's a scene with a 14-year-old boy being blindfolded and the guy keeps saying, you want this, right? You want this. And they, you know, I get rape him. And I, I think my son was 14 at the time, and my heart just started pounding. And I just couldn't stand the writer justifying that behavior by, well, that's what he wanted, because there's no such thing as consent in that kind of situation to me. And I felt that is an endorsement. That's not, look how horrible people are. Right. But how do I know the difference? In Electra, I have, um, I have Electra killing Clytemnestra on stage. The Greeks always had it off stage, but I thought, no. It is a, and it's not Orestes, that's just, I think, because you couldn't have a woman do that, because it really is about Electra wanting to kill Clytemnestra. And she drowns her again and again on stage, and the mother says, I love you, as she's doing it. And they have actually a very intimate, sweet scene before, too little, too late kind of thing. I had that because I thought the audience has to confront um, their own rage, the rage dynamic as much as love that exists so often between mothers and daughters, and especially when there's been a betrayal of some sort. Right. Um, I want to show it. I want it there so we have to look at it. It's like, okay, now, here it is. Let's look. I don't want to tell you what to think about it, uh, but I want to look at it. Let's stop denying it. And yeah, it's, it's a tricky line. Uh, for instance, in the Crackwalker, when I first wrote it, the baby died on stage. The baby was killed on once I had a child, I've put a proviso, no production can ever have this on stage. It must be off stage. Why? It felt like a betrayal. It felt, it just as don't you agree in a movie, you, even if it was all done by computer, you, it is just wrong for us to see a child sexually abused. So you could not see something we cannot see. There's some but you only, lines we cannot cross. You only came to that after you had a child. Yeah, because right? I understood the enormity of it. I mean, I obviously knew it intellectually before, right. but I understood it profoundly. I actually, I find it very, I can't watch it, you know. And people, young people do productions and they want me to come and I make excuses because I can't. Same with Palace of the End, I can't see it. I did it, I went through all the first rehearsals of the first, the premiere, and it wasn't actually a premiere, it was the third or fourth production when it was here. But uh, it's too much, I can't. So what do we do about so much narrative on network television that endorses violence? Uh, you know, there's no one, only one actor, Dustin Hoffman, is the only one who will not hold a gun. Did you know that? Did you know that about him? Isn't that anything about it? He has not ever done that. I have a mental list of the movie stars that have made their millions by holding a gun. And some of them are these supposedly super progressive like, why don't you say no? You know you could make, you know, do you need another million, really? Sometimes if you go by the movie posters, uh, in the London Underground, there's lots of movie posters. And yeah. You just go by the posters and go, oh, yeah, guy with a gun, guy with a gun, guy with a gun. Uh, no gun, guy with a gun, guy with a gun. <laughs> guy with a cello? No, no one's going to see that movie. <laughs> yeah, right. That putting the gun in the bo movie poster, <sighs> what is that? what people want to see and that's bottom line there why they're pr exactly they're fear same with walking dead i guess fear manhood freud would say other thing you know that it's a sexual image because uh, it's our power. age it's our age it, it is, is our age it is uh the gangster movies in the 40s was that post-war or was that pre the gangster movies were more pre-war 30s? Gangster movies, but also all the war movies. I mean, if you tell a narrative uh, while your country is in a major war, if you tell a narrative while, when your country has just come out of a major war, you're in a different relationship to violence. Yes, you, you are. You you're are. talking about violence a different way because you just had 45,000 people yeah. of your guys killed. Right. So you talk about violence in a different way. Yeah. If you're talking about narrative violence, yeah. which is, 
in my box, it's the easiest way to make money in stories. It's the easiest. It's the easiest way to make money. Yeah. But so the guys who tell all the bullshit stories about, you know, saving America and saving yeah. the world, they didn't go into Iraq. No. They didn't go off Afghanistan. No. And they wouldn't send their kids there either. No. But they're making money off no, it. No, and they, so they will. So it's the, I those know. who pimp violence they pimp. or make money. Absolutely. That's where I go, I'm sorry, movie star. I don't care how big Even your Even Brad career Pitt is. and people who do oh, really good things. Oh. I know. I, it's, it's, it's baffling to me. And also. So what, but the question is, why do we give into it? Why does so much of the creative community give into it? There's a great story about some Canadian black actors. You probably know the story. And I can't remember who exactly it was, but they were, you know, they're all wonderful actors, very experienced, brilliant. And they were in the room. They were given sides. It was for a TV thing. And the size was gangster drug dealer stuff. And Nigel Shaw, someone like Nigel, just looked at it, stood up, tore it in half, threw it in the garbage, and then one by one, they all left. When the casting agent came in, there was nobody in the room. <laughs> Isn't that great? Wow. But that's too rare. And I don't blame an actor struggling for a job. You know, it's much bigger than that. But once you do get some purchase and some power, you have, I agree, shame, shame on them for participating. So you say to your young writers, just write something, a play, a monologue, a speech, start. Yeah. And I, and I do say to them, and I, they have to perform excerpts because I say, as a playwright, you are an actor. And you may be too shy to perform, you may not want to perform, but you have to be an actor to be a playwright. Otherwise, you're doing it from here because you, you have to speak those words, you have to understand the subtext of the words, otherwise it's just a reading. Right. I'm writing in clues to subtext that will be go through the actor's heart and soul and an emotional experience. And the ones that can do that and put it in the present, uh, I see amazing work. that They'll put it in a drawer, they'll never do anything about it, most of them, but I do see some amazing work. 